Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Building a Secure Foundation for Your Containers with Docker Engine. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation audio using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select Telephone in the audio pane, and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to our speaker by typing your questions in the questions section of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, and we will take questions at the end of the webinar. Finally, today's webinar is being recorded, and you will receive a follow-up email to view the recording. I would now like to introduce our speaker, Jenny Fong, Director of Product Marketing at Docker. Jenny, I will now turn things over to you. Thanks, Melanie. And I'll just do a check. You can see my screen? Yep, I can see your screen perfectly. Great. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today on this webinar, Building a Secure Foundation for Your Containers with Docker Engine Enterprise. Uh, my name is Jenny Fong. As uh, Melanie mentioned, I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Docker. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at the handle TechGalJenny. And what I wanted to do today is walk through a little bit about why it's important to build a secure foundation for your apps. Um, and so we'll start there, but then we'll go into uh, more background on Docker Engine and the architecture we have. Um, recently, we launched Docker Engine 18.09, uh, and so we'll take a look at th that particular release that was just announced, and uh, then I'll focus a, more of the conversation on Docker Engine Enterprise, which is one of the flavors of Docker Engine that you can um, get. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the webinar. So why is it important to build a secure foundation? Well. You can take the analogy of when you're looking for a home. Um, you know, the things inside the house, like the wallpaper, the paint color, rugs, or hardwood flooring, those are all things that are changeable. Um, and you couldn't even say that you could change different walls within your house. But what's very difficult to change and what matters in terms of the overall construction is the foundation the house is built on. Um, that is something that is, can be very expensive or can be very uh, difficult if you have modifications you need to make. And so in this analogy, you know, we want to look at the, making sure that when we are building our platform for applications, we're really thinking about what's the underlying foundation. Now, part of that is thinking about your applications today. Uh, you know, all businesses today are powered by different types of applications. Uh, some of you may have heard of the phrase, the digital economy, and that's really true in that uh, a lot of businesses can't operate anymore uh, without all these different types of apps, things that run HR, things that run your customer relationships, things that run your billing practices. Uh, all of that is now being powered by applications. And so when we think about these apps, not only are they are business critical, but they're mission critical as well. Um, some interesting stats, though, come around in terms of what happens when you don't have access to these applications. What happens when uh, the apps aren't online? And so a couple of different studies from different reports, but you know the estimate, which is a little old, but still is that each hour of downtime can cost an organization $300,000 on average. Um, the other issue with uh, applications is what if you are subject to a security breach? And in that case, um, the average cost of a security breach can be up to three, almost $4 million. Um, and then, the last part of that is now let's say you know there was a security breach but you need to actually address it and contain it and then uh, remediate the issue that can take almost an average of 69 days and so what you see here is that applications are the lifeblood of your organization uh, but making sure that these applications are available uh, is critically important to running the business 
And a big part of that is choosing that foundation that it runs on. And when, as more and more applications get containerized, it's important to think about your container engine as part of that infrastructure stack. It's just as important as the infrastructure, the hardware you run on, whether that's on-prem or in the cloud, uh, the operating system it's running on, and uh, now with the, with the container, uh, adoption and growth in the market, it's thinking about what that container engine is. Now, one part of this, again, is thinking about the importance of that layer, but also understanding that uh, there are differences out there in what you can use as the underlying um, engine for containerized applications. So, are you building on the right container engine? Well, many of you are aware that Docker Engine first exploded in the market in 2014. Uh, some of the stats that we are aware of now is there are at least 8 million uh, active servers running Docker Engine, and I should say that is just a conservative estimate um, of all the Docker Engines that are running out there. Um, but you know, we know that there are millions of Docker Engines out there. Uh, we also know that we've seen over 56 billion image pulls from Docker Hub, uh, which goes to show the scale and uh, growth of, of people using either Docker Engine or, or Docker products and the popularity of containers overall. Um, and a big piece of that is also the vibrant and active ecosystem that is supporting containers. Uh, you know, all the major vendors, um, different ISVs, different hardware solution providers uh, and partners in the ecosystem who are building container uh, images and plugins and tools that really are helping to proliferate Docker Engine everywhere. But a big piece of the growth of Docker in general and, and the popularity of the Docker Engine is that it's built on leading industry standards. So as the world has shifted uh, into a lot of adoption of, of open source technologies, uh, a lot of organizations think it's important to stay in that space because of the ecosystem adoption around open source. So the idea being that you don't want to be locked into a technology that is fully pr proprietary. Uh, you want something that the that ecosystem and, and other vendors can build on uh, and you know that has contributed to the vast growth we've seen at Docker. Um, an interesting aspect here I want to highlight is you know there are different products in our portfolio. We have uh, the Docker desktop product that's uh, you know Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows as you may be familiar with. Uh, we also have our Docker Enterprise Container Platform, which is a management solution for um, containers that uh, is being used by many organizations to manage their containerized applications. And then, of course, what we're here to talk about, which is the Docker Engine itself. But one thing that Docker has done, though, is made sure that all of these different products are leveraging the same industry standards across the board. So we have the same you know, API and CLI for all of these different products. The same Docker commands will work on your engine as they work on your desktop, as they work on the enterprise. Uh, and that's important because again, that consistency and, and making sure things are open and you're not locked into a particular solution, uh, these are all very important things. Um, I did want to also highlight here, you know, some of the different open source organizations that we work with. Uh, so one on the left, the first group is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, which we've donated a couple of aspects to that organization. Um, both ContainerD and the Notary are things that Docker has donated, and of course Kubernetes is managed by that organization as well. Um, in the middle is the Linux Foundation OCI, which is uh, the, the runtime spec and image spec that that Docker supports. Um, and then finally, uh, we have our Mobi project. This is the the, the group of uh, open source projects that that Docker has um, opened up to the world under the Mobi um, banner. Uh, and some of the popular things like Build Kit and Compose are, are there. So these are all different components that make up the Docker platform, and again, are supported across the Docker product portfolio. Uh, but let's now focus our attention on Docker Engine specifically. 
So here's a closer look at the architecture for Docker Engine. As you see, we actually have two flavors of Docker Engine. There's the community version and the enterprise version. Uh, the enterprise version is really a superset of the community version, uh, which we have outlined here. Uh, but as you see, the community version is a combination of container D, which we're gonna talk about in a little more detail, and a, a lot of the components that I mentioned in the previous slide. So these are all uh, a lot of different components that are open source um, as individual components that are packaged together into a single solution in our Docker Engine product. So things like Notary, Build Kit are all things that are part of that open source um, framework, but are brought together into a, a all-in-one solution in Docker Engine. Now, what we want to focus on, though, is let's go to the raw underpinnings of what Docker Engine is based on, which is Container D. Um, Container D is something that we, uh, in a sense, broke a apart from the Docker engine and then donated to the open source community back in March 2017. Um, it is under the auspices of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It is a top level project there. Uh, and it was released to general availability of, in December of, last, of 2017. Um, we are looking forward and preparing for the graduation of that into a mainstream project. Uh, but the key thing here is container D in the scheme of things is the runtime for containers. This is the uh, component within Docker Engine and within other products that is powering the containers. But uh, we want to want to make sure that is the clear separation because container D is separate from a lot of the other aspects of the Docker experience that a lot of people know and love. So container D, part of the, the importance of that is that it's something we did, uh, the separation of that into its own project and, and in to extend to uh, the container, uh, sorry, CNCF, part of the goal there is that we wanted to open more innovation on the runtime and also make it more flexible to support different platforms. So when we opened that one up, we, we did so in partnership with a lot of major cloud vendors like AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud Compute and such. Um, and what we've seen since the project went generally available in 2017 is indeed a lot of great community uh, contributions to, to keep that runtime very flexible for different types of platforms, different and uh, you know running on ARM and, and different um, uh, underlying hardware. Uh, and so we continue to see great innovation happening with Container D. But again, one of the things we want to focus on or highlight is that the Docker experience that a lot of people are familiar with uh, is partly delivered by a lot of additional components that aren't there when you only run Do uh, Container D. So while Docker Engine Enterprise and Docker Engine Community are both based on Container D and include that as the the, the common runtime for containers, uh, a lot of the things that, that people enjoy in the Docker experience are packaged as a set of tools on top of the, the runtime. So for example, the Docker CLI. So being able to use commands like Docker run, Docker build, all of those things are uh, things we package as a set of solutions in our Docker engine. Uh, but again, you don't have access to that when you're running just container D on its own, uh, but they do work well together. Uh, so one of the, the new things that recently came out with Docker Engine 18.09 is a new set of uh, options that you have around build. So for those who are still new to the Docker experience, build is how you take a Docker file, which is a you know set of instructions on how you build an application and then turn that into uh, a actual image uh, or container. And so in Docker Engine 1809, we introduced uh, the option to leverage the new build kit. Uh, this is important for a lot of people because build is such a critical aspect of the developer experience. Um, and one of the, the most immediate benefits of, of leveraging build kit 
is performance improvement. So uh, a couple of different slides here you see is examples of the improvement. Um, you get leveraging build kit versus the first generation build um, on the project Mobi slash Mobi. So uh, you see anything from two to nine times faster depending on the type of build you're, you're executing. Um, these performance improvements come from a new architecture that we built around constraint caching. Uh, it, it got more intelligence built in into figuring out how to best optimize that build process, uh, including things like parallel builds. Um, these improvements I know are, are going to greatly improve the overall experience for developers using Docker, um, especially in that time savings that it will create. Uh, but we've also added a few new features and capabilities uh, within this new build kit. So things like supporting build time secrets, as well as SSH forwarding. Um, there is also some, you know, capabilities around build cache pruning, garbage collection for maintaining kind of the optimal size within your uh, Docker environment, and then extensibility. So again, the Docker engine experience that you know and love that many developers already use today uh, just got a little bit better with 18.09 and a lot of those new capabilities um, that are available. But now, uh, so th that's the Docker engine, but what we want to focus the rest of our time on is specifically Docker engine enterprise. So this is the superset of capabilities that we add on top of the regular Docker engine that's free for the community to use. Um, and a, a critical piece of that is how we create the secure, stable, and supported foundation for your business critical apps. So going back to the top of the webinar, we talked about how important your apps are to your business and how it uh, it's important to keep those running and secure and safe and patched. Um, and so when we look at what enterprises need for running those business critical apps, they need an enterprise ready Docker engine. Uh, and the critical components behind what we see as an enterprise requirement is security, stability, and support. Uh, so I'm gonna go through each of these in a little more detail, but these are all again about being that that foundation for your application that uh, gives you that experience that you need in the enterprise. Um, so on the security side, we'll talk about FIPS in, um, cryptography. We'll talk about signed images. Um, under stability, and it is really about how well does this run inside of your enterprise data center or IT environment. Um, and then under support, we'll, we'll go into some of the things we do to help organizations uh, as they're running their containerized applications. So let's start with security. And one of the, the key new things that was introduced recently is the uh, FIPS 140-2 validation that we received from the US federal government. Uh, this is important in a lot of highly regulated industries because uh, it's a process to validate the cryptography that we use inside Docker Engine. Um, and it's basically that has gone through the process and been uh, validated so that it meets the minimum standard that is required uh, by a lot of um, public sector organizations. Um, and it's also formed the foundation, FIPS 140 2 has also formed the foundation for other regulations like FISMA, PCI, HIPAA, and high tech. So it's is something definitely important to the US public sector, but expands beyond that to other regulated industries as well. Um, we added a FIPS mode inside of Docker Engine Enterprise, which is something you can toggle, uh, which basically makes sure that all the uh, encryption in the engine leverages that particular validated cryptography module. And uh, this is something that is available today with uh, Docker Engine 1809 uh, for the enterprise. Another aspect of importance is uh, leveraging Docker Content Trust. And you know, Notary and Docker Content Trust are all things that, that have existed uh, with the Docker products for some time. Um, if you're familiar with our Docker Enterprise Container Platform solution, 
one of the things we ship there is the ability to turn on a capability that we call uh, image verification. So what that means is uh, in our Docker Enterprise product, you can check this box that says that uh, only signed images can be deployed in the Docker Enterprise environment, and you can also specify who has signed it. Uh, this is a way to validate the origination and the authenticity of images before you put them in the Docker Enterprise environment. Well, we've brought those capabilities into Docker Engine Enterprise, so you can now do this uh, at the Docker engine level. So what that means is if you enable this process, you can uh, make sure that only validated images are deployed on that particular engine uh, before you run it. So that, again, prevents unsigned images from running. It means that you can enforce a, a process within your organization where developers check in an image and sign them uh, to say, yes, this came from me, a valid employee of the organization, and then uh, Engine will verify that it was signed by the right person before pushing it uh, to deployment. This is also important in some edge uh, computing use cases where you may not have direct access to the Engine at all times, and so by turning this capability on and enabling it, uh, you have a way to sort of remotely manage the content that's being deployed in those sites. So again, uh, a very important part of, of both validating the authenticity and the, the, the provenance of where applications came from. On the stability side, again, a, a big part of stability is making sure that Docker Engine runs well with your existing tools and, and, and infrastructure. So uh, we have a, a Docker Certified Partner Program, which was introduced um, over almost over a year ago, uh, and almost over two years ago, I should say. And uh, it is a process that where we work with vendors to validate and test their solutions with the Docker tools. Um, so we have three categories of certified partners. We have container partners, we have plug-in partners, and infrastructure partners. Um, in the case of the container and plug-in partners, part of being a certified partner is that we also have a joint support agreement, which means that if you do run into an issue, um, it's not a you know, or it's, it's not a blame game. It's not a you know, oh, this is a, a not my problem type of situation. With those joint support agreements, we can um, help triage the cause of the issues and work together with the other vendor to help resolve them. Um, in addition to those containers and plugins, we have the infrastructure partners for Docker certified infrastructure partners, and that spans across operating systems uh, and infrastructure and cloud providers. Uh, one of the things we've done um, to help improve that experience is we've created some reference architectures, which you can access now as a Docker Enterprise customer uh, about how to deploy Docker Enterprise on Amazon Web Services or Azure or VMware. Uh, and we continue to make sure that these, in, um, these guidelines and these best practices are, are out there. But it's part of the enterprise you know, ready type of an environment is making sure that we have well run and, and, and validated uh, integration points. Another part of stability is, is logging. Uh, logging is an important part of the, the process of, of bringing a environment to production. So being able to go into logs to troubleshoot issues, to see what's been happening, um, sometimes also as a security uh, response where you want to see if there was a security incident, uh, actions that have happened on there. Uh, so one of the things we added to the enterprise edition of the or the enterprise engine is uh, log support for all logging drivers. So there is a way to now locally cache um, the 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 logs um, and access them through there. So this is a, a way to kind of increase usability and flexibility of the logs that 
uh, are collected in the Docker engine. So another part of stability here is the extended maintenance that we offer with the Enterprise Engine. So um, what we know is a lot of organizations uh, have the ability to refresh and update applications at a much faster and higher rate than typically the underlying infrastructure. What I mean by that is, you know, you are more likely to patch and update an application than you are the operating system. And similarly, the Docker engine. So we know from working with hundreds of enterprise organizations that um, their typical life cycle for a Docker engine environment is much longer uh, and sometimes can extend out to over a year. Now, what we've done is created a extended 24 month um, maintenance life cycle for the enterprise engine, which means that even after so we just launched Enterprise Engine 1809. Even after we come out with the next version, which is estimated to be the 1903 release, we will continue to support 1809, meaning we'll continue to issue hotfixes and security patches for 1809 uh, all the way to 18 months. And then for critical security issues, we will continue to patch all the way up to 24 months. So support extends much longer, which means that organizations can really decide to upgrade the infrastructure on their own timelines. Um, and that is a key aspect of, of kind of an enterprise-based environment. Now, on the flip side, I will highlight, we did make some changes on the community side uh, and extended the maintenance of community engine to, uh, to seven months, which it used to be four, um, but the general, policy there is that we will con we will support the latest community engine. Again, what I mean by support is we'll continue to issue hotfixes and security patches on the community engine up to one month after the following release. And so if you're operating your applications on community engine, uh, it's basically saying that you have about a month of time to move from one release to the next release. Uh, and so that is a, a difference I want to highlight in our maintenance life cycles between the community and enterprise versions. Now, going into support, um, one of the things around Docker Engine Enterprise is, of course, having access to enterprise class support. Uh, what we offer is the option between business day support and business critical support. Uh, and you can see a little bit of the comparison between the two here. Uh, the biggest difference you'll note is the coverage hours, so the um, times that you can call and, and open tickets uh, for business day is during your local time business hours, uh, with, and then in business critical, that is a 24-7 model. Uh, but you'll also note that there are differences in the response time SLAs with for urgent issues. So the initial response time in business day is two business hours versus one business hour in business critical support. Uh, the, this is a, a, a important part about of the reasons to move to an enterprise engine for a lot of organizations. Because again, remember we talked about the importance of your applications and, and the idea here is if you do come across an issue uh, where something broke, something didn't work, um, a new you know, uh, operating system patch or something messed up your environment, uh, you know, do you have the staff available to fix those problems yourself or do you need somebody on the hook to make those fixes for you? And uh, part of the commercial support we offer is to, to work with you to make sure those fixes happen. Um, a lesser known part of support though is as a customer of Docker, uh, what happens is now you are a known entity. So, you know, versus somebody who downloads our community engine out there, we have no idea who you are. Uh, so in a sense, one of the things that we are able to do once we know who you are is also provide proactive support. So in some cases, this may be notifications about product changes or a new release, or uh, sometimes uh, it can be a security issue where uh, if we, 
are alerted to a security issue, we can actually send notifications out to our customers, uh, let them know of the issue, some fixes that they can make that on their own, and what our our plan is to address those issues. So that can be very important for people who, uh, especially again, if there's a new security issue that's found in and our ability to let you know about it uh, as quickly as possible. Another part of this is a relationship that you build with Docker in general, where we can uh, in, invite you to things like early private betas or use research uh, and just having that engagement with us where uh, you can provide that feedback and, and we can give you access to information and updates. Uh, so that's a big part of being a customer of Docker is that uh, relationship that we build with you. And that really kind of highlights this, which is, you know, part of our us having this separate enterprise engine is to is our commitment to give you the best foundation for your enterprise application. Um, I mentioned a little bit, you know, part of that is collaborative roadmap where we do take into account, you know, the feedback that we get from our customers. What do you need to make this run better in your environment? What are the key things that need to happen within our engine to uh, support your use cases. Uh, so as you as we go along this path, you'll see that we're going to be adding more enterprise specific features to the enterprise engine as we go. Um, and you know, again, we really do value the information and the feedback and and the sharing that we have with our customers here. Um, I also wanted to point out professional services and training though. So many organizations have Docker Engine used in their environment. They also have some staff that is uh, running that environment, but at times you may need to supplement that uh, team that you have. So uh, professional services are both advisory and implementation services that can help supplement your own staff um, and helping you execute a specific project. We also have things around uh, training courses to help your organization get up to speed with containers, you know, helping people understand the best practices around development and uh, operations of containers, um, as well as technical account managers and technical relationship account managers who can work with you on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis to understand your uh, strategies and your projects and, and how we can help align with them. So again, uh, we know that you are entrusting a lot of your business critical mission critical applications on a container platform now or a container engine uh, with Docker Engine Enterprise. We look to give you the security and stability and the support you need to give you that rock solid foundation for your applications. So if this sounds interesting uh, and you're ready to see it for yourself, uh, one last new capability we introduced in 1809 is this ability to seamlessly activate the enterprise license from Docker Engine community environments. So the key here is if you are operating Docker Engine community 1809, uh, you can now simply apply a license key and turn on the enterprise features that we've been talking about for the last uh, 20 or so minutes. So you can now get started with uh, Docker Engine. Um, if you are brand new to containers, one way you can get started without having to download or install anything is we have a, a partnership with the site training.playwithdocker.com. Uh, this is a emulated site where you can learn about the basics of containers and operating with containers. Uh, if you're ready to do more, you can download the free Docker Engine community from our uh, Docker Store environment. Uh, and then, again, if you are ready to check out some of these enterprise features, you can upgrade to Docker Engine Enterprise with a free trial license from Docker Store or even buy the license and run it in your environment today. So with that, uh, let me go and check on some of the questions that have come in during the last uh, few minutes and address those here. Yes, again, if you have any questions for Jenny, please post those in the questions panel, um, the questions section in the control panel.
and I'm not seeing any questions. But I will, uh, if you have any, please go ahead and enter them in. Otherwise, uh, you can always reach out to me, uh, jenny.fong at docker.com, or you can also reach out through Twitter at techgaljenny. Great. All right, with well, thank that, you. Jenny, yes. Thank you, Jenny. Um, this does conclude the webinar. A reminder that today's session was recorded and you will receive a follow-up email to view the recording. We thank you again for joining us and hope you have a great day.